Deer hunting has always been a very solitary sport for me. I use the term sport very loosely because the only competitiveness taking place is between myself and my quarry. I've hunted with others in the past and it always turned into a competition of who would get the first deer or the biggest deer and then they'd get all pouty if it didn't go in their favor. This always soured it for me. This distortion always threw a sense of urgency into my hunt and urgency dissolved the tranquility I would normally enjoy for my solitary hunts, so I choose to go it alone now. I don't really enjoy killing the deer any more than a farmer enjoys the slaughter of a spring lamb. Deer hunting isn't about the killing, it's about the harvest, and harvesting wild game plays an important role when you're living off the land. Well, this is what it's all about for me, fellas. As far as I'm concerned, you just can't beat it. You gotta have a little cabin to escape to. Uh, I like to come here, just me and the pooch. Uh, Frankie's curled up on the bed there, he's sacked out. I'm gonna join him here in a little while. I just whipped up a bunch of arrows. Hopefully they'll fly true. I'll be in the tree stand tomorrow at dawn. Uh, it'd be nice to have a deer come through and give me an opportunity, but you never know. I really enjoy my time just in the tree stand anyway, watching the red squirrels and chickadees and everything else that come around. Been a lot of coyotes around lately. Uh, been hearing them right outside the cabin here. Uh, I was making arrows there and they were out freaking hollering just about 50 yards from the cabin. So I don't know if that's going to mess the deer up, but it doesn't seem to. I've seen them on my trail cams be a coyote and 30 minutes later, there's deer on my trail cam, and then a little while later, there's coyote again, so they don't seem to be bothered by him very much. But anyway, I'm just going to hang out and uh, enjoy my beer, and just uh, enjoy the cabin, and uh, soak it all up. So, hopefully we'll have some venison tomorrow. That would be good. Yes, sir. I was getting a little excited when I heard the leaves rustling for a minute, <laughs> but then this fella showed up. Well, lucky for him, pulled porky wasn't on the menu for today. I had a decent sized doe come in, a nice meat deer, but the bright sun and contrasting shadows made her difficult to see and even harder for the camera to pick up. I watched her for a few minutes from the treetops till she offered me a broadside shot and I went to full draw, which is right about now. The hit looked good and she's off and running. Hey fellas, I just had a medium sized doe come in. Uh, I got my camera on, on the stabilizer here, and uh, I'm pretty sure I got her on, on tape here. Uh, she looked like she was winding me for a bit, but then she calmed down and offered me a broadside shot. And uh, she was standing right behind a little pine, and uh, I, I just didn't I didn't want to clip that pine, so I sh I, th I think the, f the shot was still good. I think it was in the firebox. It was just a little bit further back than I normally shoot for, but it looked good. She ran off. I didn't hear a crash, but uh, it looked good, though. I feel confident about it. I had this little action cam set up on my stabilizer. So hopefully I got it on camera here. But I'm nestled. My stand is nestled right into the trees here. This is the way I like them. I don't like being a silhouette like hanging on a telephone pole. Whew. Even though it was just a, you know, 
fairly small dough, my heart rate still went up. You know, it's the first deer of the season so far. I'd like to get a deer or two here and then mosey on, you know. Oh, all right, though. It looked good. It looked like it was a good hit. Here's the arrow. Good pass through. Well, I don't see any paunch on the arrow, so that's good. I'm going to uh, pick up the trail here and hopefully she's a goner. Alrighty then. Hope for the best, man. Here we go. Getting into some halfway decent blood here, man. Yes, sir. I was getting a little bit worried there for about 10 yards right from the kill site. There was uh, no blood. At least I wasn't seeing it. I was getting a little panicky. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. It looked like the arrow hit decent just a little bit far back, you know, so I thought. But I'm getting in some good blood here. I'm starting to find some real good milky stuff, so she's not going to be far. Actually, I can see a real good batch of blood right here. Right, look at that, fellas. Oh, yeah. We look at, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it's quite a blood trail right there, man. I'm about 50 yards from the stand right now. She's not going to be far. She's not going to be far at all. I'm just going to leave the camera on. Look at that. That's that milky stuff, man. That's lung butter. That's lung butter, guys. Look at that. Oh, that was a good hit. That was a good hit, gents. It's Thunderhead 100s, man. I've been using these things since the 90s. I'm never going to stop. The only way I'm going to stop using Thunderhead 100s is if they stop making them. Look at that strip right there. It's not going to be far. There she is, man. There she is. All right. Yes, sir. Oh, that, that hit was okay. Yeah, that would have been the exit hole. Let's see where the entrance is. She's a goner. Oh, yeah. Ah, nice little meat deer. Not too bad. Let's see where the entrance is. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit farther back than I like. I would have rather shot here, but she was standing. She was standing right behind a little pine about that big. And that pine was going across right here. And she was a little bit keyed up, but that was good. She didn't go far. I can see the pine that my stand is in. I No more than 60 yards she went. Excellent. Good clean kill. But the sun is just kissing the horizon now, man, in the sunset. And I, my stand was right on the edge of that marsh over there. So I'm going to get her gutted out and hauled out to the Polaris. All right, man. Got meat. Yeah.